everyone. Welcome to The Difference Makers. I'm Lynn Sanders, your host, and we have a special edition of our program with Michelle Christian Corp, who is a leading yoga instructor in Los Angeles. And she was a volunteer who went with our family to the healthcare mission with, with us at, in Ecuador through Causes for Change International. And I wanted her to share her story because it's so powerful, it's so transforming, and it's so emotional that I know it will touch your life. So because of the kindness of her heart, I brought her on spot, spur of the moment. Welcome, Michelle, and thank you for coming on to this program at the last minute. Thank you. So, Michelle, I was so grateful to have met you when we were volunteers together, and you told me so many great stories. So could you just share with our audience what an impact it made first for you to even be a volunteer with Causes for Change International? What had happened before you even got on this trip? Uh, so what happened, I had moved to Los Angeles as an actor and in 2008, in the first writer's strike, um, everything stopped. And so for me, I kind of lost my footing on my identity and who I was um, as a woman and also my purpose moving forward. I was in this limbo place for a good amount of time. And I just got so tired of thinking about my, myself. So I was in a coffee shop and I met uh, Jesse Munoz, uh, who is at the University of Chicago and he helps uh, young people volunteer abroad. And he said, you know, I really like you. I'm gonna put you in touch with a woman who's going to Ecuador. Her name is Zuli. And, and I said, well, I don't know anything about volunteering, but she and I spoke and the next thing you know, and there's a lot of magic that happened along the way that's a story in itself. Um, but I found myself in Ecuador completely out of my comfort zone because several things. So I've never volunteered. I don't speak Spanish. And I had always been told um, in my teenage years and growing up uh, by my own mother, who I do not have a relationship with, um, that I would never be a mother. And, you know, you believe I held on to that belief as if it were so. And when I went on this trip, I was 36 or 37. I think I was 37. So I had, I'd held that belief for that long. I'd never been married and I never had a child. So when I got there, I'm surrounded by all these kids and I'm like, oh my God, they're going to know I'm a fraud. They're going to know, first of all, she doesn't speak Spanish. What is this woman doing here? <laughs> and within 30 minutes, I'm playing with the kids. And one of the women that were there from Chicago was watching me and she comes up to me and she's like, can I speak with you, please? And I was like, oh my God, she knows. <laughs> and she pulls me aside and she says, who are you? And I said, my name is Michelle. And she said, um, what do you do? And I said, I wait tables. Why? And she said, well, if I offered you a job, would you come to Chicago? And I was like, doing what? And she said, social work. And I was like, a social worker? What is that? And she said, working with children. And I start laughing. I was like, oh, you, <laughs> you don't know who, you, you don't know me at all. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually really not good with children. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Just let's be clear. I'm just going to be honest. I don't know. She goes, what are you saying? They're all over you. You're a mother right. of the world. And the minute she said it, it's, it still makes me cry because it was the moment I knew my chest started to shake. And I said, can you excuse me for just a second? And I walked into the, t uh, the makeshift room where they have tuning forks. They're doing healing. I walk in the room and I said, Nobody really paid attention to me, but I was like, excuse me, everyone. Can I just be here for a minute? And I, I leaned against the wall and I slid all the way to the floor and just started sobbing. No one paid attention to me. So I'm sitting here. I can hear all this Spanish. I'm watching tuning forks and healing. And I'm sitting there and it was as if someone flipped a light on inside of me. And I, there was no way anyone would ever turn it off ever again is that I could be a mom. Yes. And I was amazing with children. I wasn't going to hurt children. And, you know, once I'd collected myself, I just realized I'd been carrying a lie. And you believe your parents, you know, your parents. Um, and it, it wasn't true. And now no one could take that away from me. And I walk outside and all the kids come running over and they're all over me and everything. And one little girl, she was like six. She's holding my hand and she was walking around with me and she would look at the kids and be like, okay. 
point to me and go, la, 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 la. <laughs> and hold my hand and keep walking. And um, I can't remember our interpreter's name. Who was, I think it was Julio. And I said, hey, excuse me, what is, what is she saying? He goes, do you really want to know what she's saying? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, she's telling them they have to be really gentle with you. You're not very smart and you don't know much. So <laughs> she's kind of like being your mom and you're a baby. Oh, wow. Wow. And so the children became my parent. It was like this weird juxtaposition of one minute I'm there holding space for them because they're all scared to go get their teeth pulled. And I'm the comic relief. I'm doing acting games with with you and we're singing. And this was before you came. I think you came a day later than me. Right, right. And so I was really out of my comfort zone. I was like, where's the leader? That's what she's doing. <laughs> I can't believe this shit. You know, and and the kids were just it's one of those things, and I, you know, I teach this in yoga is that, you know, when when you step into the unknown, anything can happen and magic can happen. I changed a belief like quantum physics. It just fell down in an instant. Something wow. I held onto for decades through a child that I didn't speak that language, looking into the face of these kids that were all over me, were miming, and something's being exchanged, something unsaid. It's like reading between the lines of a play or in poetry, mm -hmm. or you know, when you're with someone, there's always this exchange. And those kids healed me. And I'll never forget that trip. That was my first. That's so well, they, you know, when they're when you come without having the language, they're seeing your soul. Right. And they were going into your soul and you were going into their soul, and that was right. so beautiful. I remember you as the magnet. <laughs> yeah, were coming which... around you. Women were coming around you. And I just thought, wow. And I get to spend time with Michelle and the kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you guys, you and your family were, well, first of all, you're just incredible. Um, you gave me hope on what family can be. Um, but second of all, you know, it wasn't just the kids. It was also the women and the experiences I had with the women. Because if you're told that you, you're not capable of being a mother, which I think is the biggest rite of passage for a, a woman, um, is to have a, a baby, a family, right? Um and for me as a yoga teacher, I have a lot of babies. I am a mother of the world. I'm a mother and the I studied the archetype of mother after that and what mother means. It doesn't mean I necessarily have to have a baby. I'll be 50 this year. I don't have to have a baby out of my body, which I didn't have the pleasure and the opportunity of doing that. Um, but as a teacher, I have 80 year old babies. Oh. I have seven year old babies. I have 40 year old babies. I have a lot of babies. And so I realized through those kids, I realized, again, it's not what's being said, it's what's unsaid. And what is mother? And because sometimes I think things are passed down that aren't always ours and it's not always ours to hold. And I learned that on that trip and it wow. changed my life because I am a mother. It's through my teaching. That's true. And that I woman was right. I am a mother of the world. I, that's are. why I lead retreats is to take people out of their comfort zone to have experiences like I had. Um, you know, I do yoga adventure retreats with the travel yogi. It's a company I work for. And it's so you step outside of your comfort zone. Like we're I'm going to Galapagos and then Sri Lanka in March. I've never been to Sri Lanka. I don't know what's going to happen when I get there, but I can't wait to see their faces and be like this close and be with the locals and learn to cook. And like, what am I what's going to happen here? And watching other people have that experience as well, for me, means we're all one. Because when you remove the veil of any line, whether it's culture, religion, class, gender, when you remove the lines, we're all humans. And when you look into the face and you let all the lines pass away, something magical happens. That's why that trip was the precursor to where I was headed in my life. It gave me purpose. Because oh, I didn't have one before I came. Oh, wow. And six I months later, I was in India after that with the kids, 300 kids uh, putting on a play. Well, that's right. Kids. I remember that now. I want you to share the story of what happened to you on the island. When I was busy with the guitar and I came over and I saw you surrounded by women who were just, you know, edging to get close to you. And I didn't know until later what you were saying to them. Um, 
so when we went to that island again it was the same thing i was a little i, I just didn't know what to do with myself i didn't know my purpose other than to walk around and make sure everybody was okay and happy no one was scared to see the dentist and all of that uh and so you were off with the guitar playing with kids i think there's a picture of us with you playing singing your heart out not <laughs> both of our mouths are like this <laughs> right. i think there's a, one of my favorite pictures oh. and um you had you were over somewhere and all these women surrounded us and the interpreter was next to me and what was wonderful and wild to me again and not so much because magic is happening because we're in the unknown where anything is possible these women come up to me of all generations there was a there was a woman with a baby literally breastfeeding her boob was out there's a <laughs> grandmother there's the mother of the the young girl breastfeeding there's a there's a little girl there's a, a even smaller girl it was like every generation possible was standing in front of me and the mother of, of i think the woman breastfeeding was kind of harsh they were very intense on that island they're just they're living hard lives and so there's an intensity a primal intensity that came forward whenever they would communicate and she comes up to me she's like who are you uh and I looked at him and he said, she wants to know who you are. And I said, I'm Michelle. Why are you here? And where are you from? I said, I'm from Hollywood. And they all look at each other and he te he's telling them what I'm saying. And she and she's it's angry and also very um, she's very suspicious of me, not trusting. And she's like, why are you here? Mm -hmm. And I could feel everybody and they kind of made a little horseshoe around me, which I was like nervous. And I looked at him and all of a sudden, I don't know why I did what I did, but I looked at him, I said, I need you to say everything verbatim. Don't color the language, just say it the way I say it. And he said, okay. And I got very close to the intense woman. And I said, I am here because you were, you were the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. And I am here to tell you that the sun comes out of your face. But if you don't know this, it doesn't matter what my words are, but all I see is light. And I took a seed and I took her hand and I said, I'm planting my heart seed in your hand. And I closed her hand and I put it on her heart. And I said, and I'm asking you to plant the seed for all the women here. And she starts sobbing and he's looking at me and he starts sobbing. And then they all start talking at once. And it's just like a barrage of Spanish. And I'm like, what are they saying? And, he, and it's the men don't understand us. They only see us as one thing and we don't know what to do. And no one takes us seriously. We're, they beat us, they do this. And it was just like a lot of things. And I, I just said, stop. What are you gonna do about that? I said, you're obviously the leader. What can you do? And she's upset and crying. And she says, what am I supposed to do? And I said, okay, I'm gonna say this and be as honest as I can. I'm probably never coming back here. So I'm saying to you what is coming through me I don't know why, but this is what's coming to me. And if this is your one chance to know that you're the sun and you're the light, everyone will follow you. So a women's group, start a women's group. You're going to make things. You're going to plant things. You're going to teach the women that their bodies are precious. You don't bash the men. You teach by leading examples of who you are and love the men and teach them that your leaders too have a voice, but you come together as one. There's no competition cook together, knit together, walk together, commune together, eat together, and create a women's group for yourselves. And that's where the power will begin. And it's up to you, the son, to make it happen. And she just sat there and then I looked at him and he's like, what is happening? And I said, I don't know, I'm just saying what's coming to me. Wow. And they, you came over, everybody's crying, and they said, when are you coming back? I said, I don't think I'm coming back. I'm really happy that I got to see all of you, but I think it's interesting that every generation was standing in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is the rise of the feminine. It's time. Wow. And they followed me all the way down the ship. Like I was the Pied right. Piper. And if, the whole time I'm like, what was I saying? What was I, <laughs> you know, like, should I have said that? Was that too much? Is that arrogant? Is that... You know, I'm having this barrage in my own head, but they followed me. They were all crying. I hugged every one of them and I got on the boat and I said, just remember that we are all one and the light in me honors the light in you. Beautiful. 
Well, that's what Suli says. It starts with one. It starts. And you're with reinforcing one. her message and caring I didn't for know she others. Said. That's that's her message. I and I, I just want you to share that because there's so many people who don't feel good enough, just like you <laughs> didn't, and I don't, and others don't. And when they hear these words, their lives can be changed because we all need support. We all do. And what's so beautiful is you got support from the children and you gave back support. It was a total reciprocal arrangement. Spirit yeah. united, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a lot. There was some, I had wild moments with your husband, at, you know, where we talked about things. Um, the, the young girl that I held when she finally got her teeth pulled. Um, Right. And even your husband, I don't know if you asked Joel about that moment because I started saying things in Spanish and I really didn't know what I was saying. He says, do you know what you're saying? And I was like, I'm just saying what I think I know. And he said, just don't stop because it's amazing what you're saying. What were you saying? Something about the sun and oh. the little girl and um, the, something about courage. I don't remember because I don't speak Spanish. Yeah. Well, you are being guided. She, uh, they came to get me. It was Anais and she was, oh, yeah. they had walked three days and they really wanted her. She had four abscess teeth in the back in the molars and she was she was just too scared and her you know abscess teeth can kill you um and she, when i came in I, you know they said well can you just be with her she feels more calm when you're here and you know we moved her family because they were getting anxious and so instead of sitting and holding her hand i asked joel if i could lay down and lay her on top of me and her head was here and i held her and i rocked her like a baby which is what i always wanted my mother to do Oh. And so as I held her, I held her like this and just told her how proud I was, how courageous she was. And then I started saying things in Spanish that she was the sun and the light and um, how brave and like a lioness. And I, I don't remember everything I was saying. I honestly, I don't remember. And it took about 15 minutes. And Joel said, if she doesn't do it, we're going to have to move on. We have too many people waiting. And oh. then we really, we really held on tight. And she did. She did them all. And then I carried her outside and held her and I just kept telling her because she was so scared to support her. And um, I was it was like I was holding my young self. Wow. Because yes. while I was holding her, I had some intense moments as a kid uh, in the hospital and no one held me. And I, I remember wanting that as a kid and just feeling very scared because um, I had a, a surgery and my ears were operated on. I had all kinds of things. Mm. Um, but holding her, it was like, I was healing. I was holding my own self Wow. through, through her. Mm -hmm. So it was, I mean, when I say that trip was, I have tons of stories and, um, and that happened it all in two weeks. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, I want people everywhere to know that their actions matter. And here you went forward and had the courage to go to a country where you didn't speak the language. You didn't feel good about working with children and your life was transformed. So you're a beautiful example to many people of what can happen when they just allow the universe to direct them to where they need to be. I, well, I want, and ahead. also, I just want to say, you know, before I got on the plane, like before I went on this trip, like the minute I booked the trip, you know, the first thing I did was eat a pan of brownies because I and I don't think I taste them. I was like, what am I doing? And then I realized the pan was, and I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? I made myself sick. <laughs> and even on the way to the airport eight weeks later, almost, I've never been scared to travel. I almost threw up at the airport because I'm like, oh my gosh, I am really nervous because I've never had an experience of getting sick before getting on a plane just out of fear. What if they can't find me? What? I've never traveled out of the country by myself. I don't know. Oh my gosh, I don't speak the language. And, you know, all these wild thoughts, the roadblocks that hold you back. And I was, once I was on the plane, I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. And it was as if something else was taking me there. And sometimes I just think if we can move through the fear, really my experience is that magic really does happen. Um, and that as long as you're taking care of yourself and you're self-aware, you're protected. Cause I found Joel, I literally called to see on the, on the, overhead if you know the lint the sanders were there <laughs> and he comes up and he even looked at me like i was literally trembling i'm like are they here like, what's wrong with this woman what is wrong with this woman <laughs> and he he kept laughing at me and it was almost like he laughed at my fear and i was like because i am scared and he just thought it was funny he was so shocked that i was so i looked terrified no um and then he was just 
he was such a good teacher for me and I really bonded with him and I was so grateful for him being there as well because he's an amazing individual as you are Thank and you. get to sing with you and then we also went to the school remember right. the the women yes yeah, so you taught the children also how to brush their teeth with Andrew I have pictures yes, but we the also room. taught the women too to take care of themselves because they felt like objects there and they were having oh. babies so young right yes it was so and that beautiful. came because of the women that I met on the island, that we just started doing things that weren't a part of that trip. It was just sort of other things that we did because it was important. That's so beautiful. And now you're transforming lives through yoga in the United yeah. States, which is, yeah. so I would like you to tell her when your website, we'll put it up on the, on the uh, description where they could find out more about you. And I also want you to think about a message you'd like to leave with everyone. So what is the website? Where could people find you, Michelle? Um, my more? website is michellecorpyoga.com. Michelle with two L's. M -I -C -H -E. Corpyoga.com. Yes, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Corp is my last name. C-O-R-P yoga.com. Okay. And uh, so they can learn more. I, I imagine you may perhaps do you teach through Zoom as well. I do all of all of the information, all the retreats, the ways to work with me, how I found yoga and became a teacher. And my logo is Ignite the Light. Oh, I love that. Ignite the Light. Yes. So what the, yeah. There's so many. I'm so grateful that you're doing this to share your stories. Tell me and tell everyone what would be a message you'd like to leave with them? before we go what about do you want the to, volunteer trips about anything that you a message that you would like to leave for people to remember it could be about the volunteer trip about them about that, what you learned. i just what i've learned traveling the world is that we are all one it sounds frou-frou and you hear it all the time but every place i've gone whether it's sitting in india and watching Indian soap operas and all they wanted to know about was my boyfriend and that I was living with someone because, you know, and I, I'm looking at them and although they're in all this regalia and blacked out eyes and, you know, they're asking about my boyfriend who I live with and they're watching soap operas. I was like, this sounds like the South where I grew up, you know, <laughs> except you guys are dressed a little different. Yeah. Um, or, you know, it's in Cambodia, the smiles on those children still, I'll never forget them. Um, Beautiful. Anywhere in the world, Iceland, and hearing the stories there, and I learned I learned a prayer handshake in Nicaragua with a little girl on a cacao plantation. You hold your hands like this, mm -hmm. and she puts hers around yours, and you look into each other's eyes and you shake the prayer. Oh, I love that. It's yes, beautiful. the prayer handshake. All these things that I've learned around the world is that everybody just wants to connect in some way, shape, or form to be seen, to be heard, and to connect. We are all one. There are no Beautiful. lines. Beautiful. And you yeah. certainly have gotten over your fear of traveling now that you've gone all over. I get nervous the world. a little bit every now and then. I'll be going back yeah. to Guayaquil. Oh, really? I'm leading a yoga retreat in the Galapagos in October. And I, I'm flying into that airport again. And I'm like, wow, it's very fortuitous. You know, 12 years later, coming back around to the place it, it started. Not the mm -hmm. yoga. I'd, I'd been doing yoga since 2003, but merging my love of of the world and other cultures and other lands and because I'm, I'm mystified by everyone that looks different than me and i love indigenous peoples and i love because we're actually so similar that's true that's and that's what i love about traveling yeah. to combine yoga and the spirituality of that for me astrology the lands the people and getting to bring others with me Thank yeah, you, Michelle. Thank You're you. So inspiring. Thank you for taking this time. I want everyone to get to know you as well. You were part of a magical trip with us. It was a magical trip. It was. And it, it really, really was. was. Yeah. And your message is so important for everyone in this crazy world. That's why I'm so passionate about getting positive stories out. We need to hear them so people can have hope and belief and faith that they can make a difference too. So you're yes. a shining example i love that and you're right the world if we all are one then the world would be a better place we would treat each other better we wouldn't be so scared of everyone you know right. i i just think we have to start somewhere we start with ourselves exactly thank you so much well 
Thank you. All the best to you, Michelle. And for everyone listening, follow Michelle Christian Corp, and you can also feel that connection. All the best and take care. Bye-bye. Bye, Lynn. Thank you. Bye-bye.